Okay, for today's video lesson, we're going to be introducing the concept of similarity of figures. Um, today's topic 6.1 is similar polygons. So two figures are similar if they have the same shape, but are different sizes. Okay, so if we look at these uh, pair of images here, so we have two hearts and two stars. So the two hearts are similar because they are reduced by the same scale factor. Okay. Um, the two stars are not because each point of the star is not reduced by the same amount. If we were to look at the sides, they are almost the same length. Uh, if we were to look at the top of the star, uh, it is reduced by a larger factor. So those, um, those two stars are not similar, but because the heart um, is proportionately reduced, we say that they are similar, okay? So a diagram drawn to scale to another diagram creates a similar figure, okay? So if we reduce it or enlarge it by the same uh, factor, they are similar. Um, so if we enlarge a photograph, when we reproduce the scale, uh, we'll also create a similar figure, all right? So for two figures to be similar, so corresponding angles must be the same size and corresponding sides must be proportionate. So remember we introduced the idea of corresponding angles in our last unit. Um, those were two angles which were um, by two parallel or non-parallel line, lines intersected by a transversal that were kind of in that same location, okay? So corresponding sides and angles, uh, these are angles or sides that are in the same relative position, okay? So if we look at these two triangles here, so we have uh, triangle BAC over here, okay, BAC. Remember when we're naming triangles, uh, we just pick a side and go left to right, okay? So under that same convention, this triangle on the right is going to be triangle EDF, okay? And sides A and D, B and E, and C and F are all corresponding, okay? So they're in the same relative location, okay? And remember that the sides are across from those angles, okay? So if that is side C, those are going to be uh, angle C, and angle F, excuse me. Okay, across from side D, we will have angle D, and across from side A, we'll have angle A, and lastly, across from side B, angle B, and across from side E, we'll have angle E. Okay, so corresponding sides and angles are those that are in the same location. Okay, so another way um, so this, this formula here is how we are going to check if our images are similar uh, to see if they have been enlarged or reduced by the same scale factor, okay? So scale factor can be calculated by dividing the size of the model by the size of the actual thing, okay? So if it's uh, a model of an airplane, for example, say the model is five centimeters and the actual airplane was 10 meters. To find that scale factor, we just divide the one by the other, okay? Uh, if it's not a model or an actual, and if it's just two images, okay, we'll assign one image to be the new, one to be the old, and we just divide those to find the scale factor between images, okay? Um, don't worry too, too much about this formula. We will see it in action right away. Okay, so Tara has a, drawn a scale bedroom of her, or a scale diagram of her bedroom. On the diagram, the walls have the following lengths. Okay, so we have just a bunch of lengths here. So the question is, if the longest wall in her room is actually 4.1 meters in length, how long are the actual walls? Okay, so let's look at this image here and try to find the longest wall. Okay, 
So the longest wall there is 6.7, okay? And the actual measurement is 4.1 meters, okay? So let's write our scale factor formula. So scale factor is equal to model over actual, okay? Because it's, the scale diagram is a model. Okay, and the longest wall in her room is actually 4.1 meters. So in the model, the longest wall is 6.7 centimeters. And the actual measurement is 4.1 meters. Okay, so let's just punch those into the calculator. So scale factor is 6.7 divided by 4.1. We put that into the calculator and we get a scale factor of 1.63414 or 6341. I'm just gonna write 1.63, okay? But do not round this number, okay? Because it is, it's an intermediate calculation, not a final answer. So do not round this number here, okay? So now we have found the scale factor. Now we need to calculate the length of all of the other walls, okay? So let's start with this 6.3 centimeter side, okay? So we know the model length. We're trying to calculate the actual. So now we are going to review our algebra skills. So scale factor equals model over actual. Okay, we are calculating for actual. So currently we are dividing by actual, so we will multiply both sides by actual. I'm just gonna use A. Okay, so multiply both sides by actual. Anything divided by itself cancels out. And remember we're solving for actual, so we still need to divide both sides by scale factor, okay? Anything divided by itself cancels. So my actual me measurement is equal to the model measurement divided by the scale factor. Okay, so for the 6.3 centimeter side, that is my measurement. So 6.3 centimeters divided by my scale factor, which I'm not going to round. 1.63 centimeters per meter. Okay, <clears throat> centimeters uh, units cancel, and then we're just going to be left with meters, which is really good. So the actual measurement here, and if we're going to round that to the nearest tenth, is 1.6, or excuse me, uh, it's 3.9 meters for the 6.3 centimeter side, 3.9 meters. Okay, so we've just calculated that 6.3 centimeter side. Now I would encourage you to pause this video and try to calculate those remaining sides on your own. Okay, um, we can use that same conversion factor. Now that we've simplified for what the actual side, um, now that the equation is written in terms of the actual measurement, uh, we don't need to manipulate that formula each time. We can use the actual is equal to model over scale factor each time, okay? So we'll do it for the 3.8 centimeter now. So the model is 3.8 centimeters. My scale factor is 1.63 centimeters per meter. And the 3.8 uh, meters side is actually 2.3 meters. Okay, and we'll just keep going around one side at a time. 
Okay, we'll do that 3.7 centimeter side. Okay, um, again, we're just gonna use that th same formula. So 3.7 centimeters divided by 1.63 centimeters per meter. That gives me a side of 2.3 meters as well. Okay, we got two more to go, um, but you get the point. So uh, please try those on your own and I will give you the answers for those last two. So my 2.9 centimeter side uh, divided by that scale factor is going to be 1.8 meters rounded to the nearest tenth. And my 2.6 side right there, 2.6 centimeters divided by 1.63. That's scale factor again. Again, remember I'm not rounding my intermediates and that is going to give me an actual size of 1.6 meters. Okay, so that is how we apply scale factors. Okay, so a little bit of algebra, a little bit of review from earlier in the school year. All right, uh, so next example. So on a blueprint, a room measures 2.75 inches by 1.5 inches. So we should always draw an image to help us visualize the problem. Okay. So the long side is 2.75 inches, and the short side is 1.5 inches. Okay, and our scale factor, one inch equals eight feet. Okay, so this one, uh, we're just going to multiply um, our original measurement by that scale factor of eight to one. Okay, we could also write this as eight feet over one inch. Okay, if you like your unit units to cross out. Okay, so we'll just do one side at a time. So let's do 2.75. So 2.75 inches multiplied by that eight feet per one inch scale factor. And that will equal 22 feet in length. Okay, now we'll just do that other side right there. So it is 1.5 inches. And we're going to multiply that by our 8 feet per 1 inch scale factor. And that side of the room will be 12 feet in length. Okay, so let's just wrap this up with a sentence. So the dimensions of the room are 22 feet by 12 feet. All right. Okay. So now we are presented with two polygons. Okay, these are trapezoids. And we're asked if they are similar. Okay, so for two polygons to be similar, each side must be either enlarged or reduced by the same conversion factor. Okay, another thing here, um, remember we need to be comparing the corresponding sides. So. For example, let's make sure we're comparing the longest sides or the bases of these trapezoids and not the base of one trapezoid and what it might appear to be the base in, in this new shape here, okay? So we will compare the bases and the bases, okay? So again, our scale factor formula um, is either model over actual, or new over old. Okay, I'm just gonna go use new over old for this one. If you like the model over actual, that one is fine. 
And then what one you represent or what one you decide as new or old uh, between the left or right shape is kind of arbitrary as long as you're consistent, okay? So I'm gonna call this one over here new and the one on my right is gonna be the old one, okay? So again, uh, let's just find those scale factors. So for my new base, it is five centimeters. And for my old base, it is 2.4 centimeters. Okay. And that is going to give me a scale factor of 2.08. Okay. So we know that this side is being reduced by a factor of 2.08. Okay, or going from old to new, it's being enlarged by a factor of 2.08. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out the scale factor for another side. So I'm gonna go clockwise to the left. So make sure we're going to pick out the same side. Okay, and the scale factor for this side, new over old. So my new side is 3.6 centimeters and my old side is 1.8 centimeters. Okay, divide those, your units will cancel. That's why my top number doesn't have any units and it gives me a scale factor of two, okay? Right there, we can stop, okay? Because each side has not been enlarged by the same scale factor, um, we can go ahead and say, uh, that these two polygons are not similar. Okay. So again, just make sure or right, for polygons to be similar, each side must be enlarged or re reduced by the same factor, the same scale factor. Okay. All right. Last question for this lesson. Okay. So the scale of a model airplane to the actual airplane is two to 45, okay? So we know the scale factor. So scale factor is two to 45, okay? And if we just reason um, this statement a little bit, a model airplane to a real airplane, um, we're going to be getting bigger, right? Okay, so if, you're doing this calculation and your actual airplane is smaller than the model, uh, it's a good indicator that you may have uh, done something incorrectly, okay? So we know the model is 38 centimeters in length, okay? And we're going to be multiplying it by our conversion factor here. So ratios are, kind, are related to fractions, okay? They're kind of just tilted on their side. Um, if we were to write this ratio as a fraction, it's going to be, uh, we're just going to put it on its side and it's 45 over two, okay? Um, and we're getting bigger, so we want our numerator to be larger than the denominator, okay? We're just going to multiply it by that conversion factor right there. And then we get the actual is going to equal 855 centimeters. And again, if we uh, look at our numbers, the model's 38 uh, and the actual is 855 centimeters. So that should make sense.